Hello, everyone. Okay, um, so I'm Peter. This talk is about building private seed plants, and it's a continuation of the previous talk, but we'll go uh, into more details um, about more complicated scenarios when you want to run your own private seed plant for your own code and what tools you can use uh, to um, manage that. But before we go into the uh, details, I want to take a step back and ask a very philosophical question, what is CPAN? So basically, a CPAN repository is a bunch of distributions and then some kind of index that uh, provides additional information about those distributions, such as where they are, what are their names, versions, what packages they provide, and so on. And basically, that's all there is to it. That's everything in normal CPAN client needs to know to go to your repository, um, ask questions about that, about it, and install whatever it needs. But if you want to run your own private CPAN, the use cases can get fairly uh, complicated. So you may, for example, want to have just the CPAN mirror to speed up your local installs, or uh, you want to mix that with your private code, or you might want to create just a pass-through mirror which contains only your distributions and then delegates to a uh, public mirror for the additional dependencies. You may want to stick something like a um, Perl doc front end on top of it so that uh, your developers can read that documentation from your uh, mirror, or you can add some remote management, your own post server, or you can integrate it with a continuous integration server so you can run tests or trigger builds anytime you um, add a new distribution to your mirror. Or uh, you can get more uh, fancy what, what kind of indexes your repository provides. So basically the CPAN um, index consists of a bunch of um, weird index files. Um, and you normally need to care only about a, uh, a couple of them, but if you want to get some kind of high, better level of support uh, uh, from your CPAN clients, uh, you may want to add additional types of index, uh, index files to your mirror or you can um, run a completely different kind of index. For example, you may say you want to add a meta CPAN API on top of your um, uh, repository so that you could qu query it with tools that can uh, speak the meta CPAN language. Uh, or you can um, run a CPAN minus index, or um, if you want to, you can have no index at all uh, because there are tools um, on CPAN that uh, can work without any index at all. And one notable example is Carton, which doesn't care about your index at all. It only is interested in um, absolute distribution um, URLs. Um, so basically, it all starts simple, but it can get very complicated over time. And the thing is, I've worked with uh, private repositories for a few years now, and uh, you start with the simple use cases, but then the more your um, development and deployment processes depend on your private repository, the more you want to add to it in terms of functionality. So you need tools that um, will allow you to grow uh, and even be able to anticipate future needs that you're not aware of. Because the CPAN ecosystem evolves, there are tools that uh, will um, uh, are right now in development and will mature in a year or two, and then you want to be able to use um, those with your private repository as well. So um, right now, um, if you look at what's out there on CPAN, CPAN Mini is the most popular uh, library for managing your own repository. Um, John Allen before me talked about that. Um, however, CPAN Mini is, although it's very good at what it does, uh, which is mirror some parts of CPAN and then um, add some of your local distributions, if you want to do something more complicated than that, CPAN Mini is really not a very good choice, uh, and we'll talk a bit more about that in a minute. Pinto is a new uh, library that's becoming very popular. It's being developed rather rapidly. It has plenty of features, uh, and it kind of addresses the uh, more fundamental uh, drawbacks of CPAN Mini's design. OPAN, CPAN site, and my CPAN app DPAN, they're older than Pinto, but um, they aim to solve the same kind of issue that Pinto does, but um, they haven't really gained much traction, and they're not very well documented, and they don't provide any unique 
features and unique proposition on top of what Pinto does. And I'm not going to be talking about them in this talk. SIP and Loco is what I'm writing right now, and it's a kind of a different approach to the whole process, and we'll get to that in a few minutes. Now, SIP and Mini, um, like I said, is very well tested, very old, very stable. Uh, there's a few things that it does, and it does them very well, but then there's lots of things that it doesn't do very well at all. So it has many extensions on CPAN, but all of those work by actually subclassing CPAN Mini, because that's the only way that you can extend it. This has the unfortunate consequence that you cannot um, use multiple extensions at the same time. So if, for example, you want to use CPAN Mini Inject, and then also use some other uh, CPAN Mini-based um, extension that, for example, mirrors a specific subset of CPAN, well, you can't. Or um, in CPAN Mini is very um, difficult about um, the index files it creates. So, for example, if you want to um, upload a new distribution to your repository, but then not add that to the index so that you keep an older stable version in the index, but be able to perform tests with the new one, you can't do that. Also, CPAN Mini is very um, tightly coupled with the m mirroring uh, process. So if you want, for example, to create a, pa a pass-through mirror, which doesn't actually uh, update from a public CPAN mirror, it's very difficult to do that. It's not impossible to do any of these, but you have to jump through some very awful hooks, and the end result is not very pretty. I've tried it more than a few times, um, really. So Pinto, um, it's... Um, addresses many of those issues because from the start it was designed to work with private code and also to be extensible. Uh, it has built-in injection, uh, it has very fine-grained index control, um, you can keep multiple indexes at the same time, it calls them stacks, and then you can go and for each index say, okay, in this index I want this version of this distribution, and then uh, in another index I want a different version. Uh, it calls this pinning and unpinning distributions. I guess that's where the name comes from. Uh, it has some very advanced features, such as version control integration, uh, so you can... Um, have all the whole of your repository under version control. It allows you to have remote access. This is what JJ talked about in the previous talk, to um, access it from a different machine via REST protocol. Uh, but most importantly, it's built on modern, at a modern pole stack. It uses um, Moose throughout, so it's actually easy to extend it, except not quite. Um, so when I did my initial um, research on what uh, tools I could use before starting to work on CPAN local. Uh, Pinto definitely came on top of them all, uh, but the problem with it is that it's still undergoing very heavy development. And because it's a f it provides lots of features and it's a fairly large distribution, um, and at the same time the API is changing a lot, and because the API is changing there isn't really much documentation at all. So it was difficult for me to make a decision to commit my company to Pinto until I've seen that it's more stable and uh, if new features need to be, custom for us need to be added, that would have a predictable, predictable amount of effort involved. Um, but also what I didn't like about Pinto is that it tries to provide a lot of functionality out of the box. Um, and the more I was looking at what was existing on CPAN, um, the more I saw that all of those different libraries, what they do is they, they um, kind of have an idea about what your CPAN should look like, what your private repository w would look like, what you want to do with it and how you want to do it, and then uh, implement this functionality for you. Uh, the thing was, the solution that we needed um, at a company where I work uh, was very non-standard, because of, so we have to migrate a dependencies which have been uh, maintained in a certain way for like more than 10 years. Uh, and there are many different weird requirements that uh, the whole migration process had to meet. And um, m many of these were very custom to, um, to the way we do things and will not necessarily be useful to other people. So it was very important for me that uh, whatever we use to manage our repository uh, it's focused on um, extensibility um, rather than really providing feature features. So um, what does a Perl programmer do when there are a dozen libraries in CPAN that don't quite do the job? He goes and writes yet another one that doesn't quite do the job. Um, so CPAN local 
it's a kind of a different take on the whole problem uh, because it's not really software that will manage your repository for you. It's um, a toolkit that lets you build the software that will manage your repository. Um, it is, um, is inspired by Dizzilla, which is uh, uh, one of my favorite libraries on CPAN. Um, and if you look at Dizzilla, it has many, many, many different plugins, and each plugin does its own little task. And then when you combine them and you give them different parameters, you can uh, come up with great distributions in very, very different ways. And basically in the Perl world, uh, if you have many opinionated Perl programmers, uh, giving them options sometimes can be a very good thing. Now CPAN Loco, uh, like I said, is based around extensibility and it um, uh, assumes as little as possible about how your repository will function. It doesn't care if uh, your indexes will be index CPAN index files or something based on a database or whatnot. It doesn't care uh, how y your distributions are structured, where they go in terms of file paths. Um, it doesn't care of what uh, additional software you run on top of it. Um, and because of that, it's actually um, very, very easy to, um, the learning curve, curve involved in uh, creating uh, a plugin on top of it is um, very small. So CPAN Loco uses um, so-called plugin roles. Uh, basically, the process of managing a repository is split into stages, and each stage uh, is defined by a individual moves role. This is very, very similar to the way Distiller works. Um, so whenever you run a CPAN Loco command, uh, it will find out what are the stages that correspond to that command then it will find all the plugins that implement those, that are uh, supposed to run at those stages, and go on and run them. Basically, those stages, you can see them here, uh, they can be divided into two rough group, groups. The first one are administrative. These are ones that you run like rarely, and they're normally run se separately. For example, the initialize stage, this takes place when you want to create a new repository. For example, uh, remove when you want to delete an existing repository. Um, and then there's a second group uh, which all run in uh, one go uh, in, and all are part of the update process. So anytime you want to update your repository with new stuff, uh, you get to run all of these at the same time. Uh, so I'll go quickly through uh, um, uh, all of those, uh, most of these stages, S and so that you can see um, how the whole thing fits together. The initialize stage, um, you run that when you create a new repo, and basically the things you would do there then is to create everything that uh, in the later stages, other plugins would ex expect just to be there. Uh, any directories, uh, create empty databases, index files, initialize your version control system if you're going to be using one. Uh, then there's the gather stage, which is the first one from the um, update process. Uh, its purpose is to create the list of distributions that you want to add to your repository. And you could either get that list from uh, uh, the indexes of a CPAN mirror or from um, an explicit list of local paths or absolute URIs that you've given it. Uh, or you can uh, do something more complicated, such as get a distribution from CPAN, then apply some local patches, and then mark that for addition. Uh, and of course, you can combine different plugins that do uh, one or more of these things, so they can uh, customize your list. Then there's the prune uh, stage, and it's, it complements the gather stage, and what it does is takes the list that you already created, and then it removes stuff from it. Uh, you could use that to remove duplicates that have been added from different plugins, or um, you can filter by name, author, or something else. Or if you want to implement some kind of your uh, polls, you may check permissions and things like that. Uh, now, at this point, you already have the final list of distributions that you want to add to your repository when you run uh, an update command. Uh, the inject stage is when those distributions are actually copied to your uh, repo. Um, that's basically all it does. And then there's the index stage, which takes the newly added distributions and then updates all of your index files, what, whatever they may be. Now, at that point, after you've run uh, the 
um, indexing, your repository is already in a, uh, uh, ready to use. It's in a consistent state. And the finalized stage uh, is that so you can do actions at the end of all that. And all of these actions assume that your repository is ready. So you can do things like send an email that, that uh, the update was completed. You, that's a good time to commit to a version control system or um, trigger a continuous integration run, for example, to um, if you've just supported a new private distributions, you can build that into an RPM or Debian or um, whatever you use. So um, that's uh, what a plugin uh, that uh, that you, uh, that's based on CPAN local would look like. Um, so the first thing it does is it extends CPAN local plugin. The second thing it does, it does, it says, I'm going to implement the CPAN lo local role finalized. This is the finalized role, which means I will run um, at the end of the update process. Uh, because uh, what we want to do with this plugin uh, is to send a tweet that we've just updated uh, our repository. Uh, it's going to have a bunch of settings, username, password, um, and then it will create a Twitter object, a Twitter client object. Uh, and then, and this is the important part, it, uh, the finalized role requires a finalized method. The finalized method receives a list of distributions that were just added to your repository. So it will, for each one, it will just um, do a tweet. And that's all there is. Uh, then you have a CPAN local uh, ini file uh, in the root of your repository. And you can configure some additional plugins in it. And then you also add the tweet plugin. You specify a username uh, and password and so that your client can use them. And that's it. Now when you run update, uh, CPAN local will do whatever it has to do, and at the end, it will do that tweet. Now, the finalize method takes as a parameter uh, a list of distributions. These are the ones that we just added. Now, all of the rows, all of the um, stages in the update process work with distributions. So for example, the gather row, the gather uh, method uh, required by the gather row takes no parameters and re returns a list of dist distributions that it wants to be added to the repository. The prune method uh, takes the one that were added by gather and then returns a list of distributions with whatever it has filtered removed from that list. Inject takes a list of distributions and then adds them to your file system or somewhere else and then returns a list of those that were successfully added and so on and so on. And those distributions are actually um, instances of CPAN local distributions. Distribution this is a very simple class with um, file name, which is the uh, file name of the distribution, author ID, and then there is path, which is where your distribution lives relative to your repository root, and this is normally calculated from uh, the above two parameters. Now, if we go back to the example, the finalized method, you will see that uh, it has a, n it calls a name info method on the distribution objects that it uses. But this method is not really defined here. So the way uh, distribution objects work is they can be extended with rows. And uh, rows add additional functionality on top of the base class. CPAN local ships with um, a few of them. From URI is a row that lets you um, create a distribution object that uh, corresponds to a distribution on a uh, remote CPAN mirror. Name info will build a CPAN, uh, well, this name info object for the distribution. This is a object which collects information from the distribution name. Uh, the metadata role will attempt to create a CPAN meta object with metadata for that distribution, and MD5 will create a checksum, which is useful when you want to compare distributions. Uh, back to the example, at the end of it, there's a s method called requires distribution roles. Uh, and in this case, it returns a single uh, string name info. So this, every plugin has the option to say, 
to specify this method, and it has to return the names of rows that this plugin requires in order to function correctly. Right, we are out of time, almost. Um, so what SIP and local will do for you, uh, when it loads your plugins, it will co-require distribution rows on each one of them, collect the name as of required rows, and then create a new anonymous class that contains all of those rows applied. Um, and you can use it with, um, in your plugin as the distribution class. So when you say dollar self arrow distribution class arrow new, it will create a distribution role that knows how to play well with all the other plugins in your, rep, in your repository. Uh, the only other thing Sipan local plugin gives you are, is the root parameter, which is the root of your repository, and basically that's it. So as long as you know about the stages, the distribution roles, and the root of your repository, you're good to write whatever crazy stuff you need for your repository. Uh, so that's it. Um, the um, local repository ecosystem of CPAN is kind of still evolving, but there's a lot of tools in CPAN already that are there to help. Uh, and there's a, there are like uh, John Allenson before me, there are great benefits if you want to go down this path. That's it. Questions? Good. Thank you.